With the Switch 2 looming as we get closer to 2025, now is a good time to look at what Nintendo's first-party studios could currently be working on. Nintendo isn't always clear who is developing what, but there are indeed different teams that tend to work on certain franchises. And by doing some research, we should be able to get an educated guess as to what could currently be in development for 2025 and beyond. Of course, to do this, we need to establish what teams inside Nintendo tend to work on what. Nintendo teams that operate in their main offices in Kyoto and Tokyo, respectively, are all called EPD Group, plus a specific number. EPD means Entertainment and Planning Division. You may have heard of EAD in the past if you followed Nintendo for a long time. That was the Nintendo Entertainment Analysis and Development Division, but they merged with the Nintendo Software Planning and Development, SPD Division, to form the new EPD. That happened on September 16th, 2015. The merger was part of a company-wide restructuring that then-President Satoru Iwata had planned. But unfortunately, it officially took place not long after the death of the late great Satoru Iwata in July 2015. Before we begin, it should be clear that each team within EPD is not given a number for their importance. It's just the way Nintendo separates them. There are currently 10 numbered groups within EPD though groups 1, 2, and 6 are considered external R&D teams, meaning they usually assist with development and aren't the main developer. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Group 1 has most recently worked on Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Fire Emblem Warriors, Three Hopes, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and now do you see what I mean? We know Monolith Soft is the lead developer of Xenoblade. HAL Laboratory was the leader on Kirby and Fire Emblem Three Hopes was developed outside Nintendo by Omega Force, but EPD-1 still contributes heavenly. Their main focus is probably on helping Monolith Soft with their next game, which we'll get to later. EPD Group 2's most recent works are F-099, Super Mario RPG, Another Code Recollection, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, and so on. As you can see, they get around. Genuinely, it's impossible to predict anything for them because they help so many different teams. So we'll leave that one blank and move into our first lead development team, EPD Group 3. This is simply the Zelda team. Their main projects are always big Zelda games, though of course, even if they don't lead a project, if it's related to Zelda, they contribute. Such as how they still had important people on Echoes of Wisdom, even if Grezzo did the day-to-day -day development. This obviously means their most recent main game was Tears of the Kingdom, so it'll be a while before they release a fully new game on Switch 2. But since Group 3 never stops working on Zelda, it's safe to say they're likely in pre-production prototyping the next main entry right now, even if it's years away. A lot of people have also brought up the idea of a full Ocarina of Time remake, and while I would love that as it is my favorite game of all time, I should point out that we don't really have any evidence they're doing that right now. Series producer A.G. Aonuma has laughed and said no comment when asked about it, and some people take the lack of a flat denial as a possible hint, but Nintendo is always so secretive, so they would unlikely give a firm answer either way. It's important to note they did do Wind Waker HD back as a test for HD development back on the Wii U, and they said they were testing art styles for Zelda Wii U, which of course turned into Breath of the Wild. So never say never, as history could repeat itself. Still, for now, I'm saying their next project is a brand new Zelda, and not a remake. EPD Group 4 is the team more focused on quote-unquote casual titles. Some of their most recent titles are Ring Fit Adventure, Jump Rope Challenge, Game Builder Garage, and Nintendo Switch Sports. Personally, when I look at that list, I can't help but lean one way for their next game. I 100% believe they're making Ring Fit Adventure 2. Ring Fit Adventure was a shocking breakout new IP hit for Nintendo on the Switch. If you've not kept up, you might be surprised to know that it sold well over 15 million copies up to this point. It's not some small workout game, it's actually a huge sales hit, and its critical and fan reception has been good too. I would be shocked if they don't continue the series on Switch 2. EPD Group 5 is a fan favorite as this team is focused on two very popular franchises in Animal Crossing and Splatoon. All their projects have been from those two series for a long time, so it's safe to say one of them is their first Switch 2 game. But what? I actually think this one's a bit tough. 
Animal Crossing and Splatoon are both big sellers, with Splatoon 2 and 3 doing about 13 and 12 million respectively, and Animal Crossing New Horizons of course being a big breakout hit and doing over 45 million copies sold. The timing is a bit odd though. Splatoon 3 launched in September 2022, and just this September had its final major update, whereas Animal Crossing New Horizons launched March 2020. Looking at that, you might expect Animal Crossing to definitely be their next game, but I'm still unsure. It's certainly possible, but Animal Crossing was marketed heavily with the Switch Lite, and its massive sales make it a very mainstream series. Don't get me wrong, Splatoon is very successful, but Animal Crossing Under News Horizons, you know, got way more of that mainstream market. And if anim a new Animal Crossing is out really early on the Switch 2, well that will be when the Switch 2 is at its most limited stock-wise and its most expensive. I really could see Animal Crossing being a little later and Nintendo having another cheaper light-style revision ready for it. On the other hand, I do feel like Splatoon 4 should be a major leap for the series, as it does feel like if they come out with an iterative sequel too soon, people will be critical of that. I'm going to go off the map a bit and say that Nintendo actually gives Splatoon 3 a little more life after Switch 2 comes out, with a big update and enhances it if you play it on Switch 2. And EPD 5's next game actually is a Splatoon spin-off. The franchise has a lot of potential with its world and lore, and I think they'll give us something new and unique and not a standard Splatoon. Exactly in what way, I'm not sure, but I think they'll turn proper Splatoon into a Mario Kart slash Smash Brothers, like once a generation evergreen multiplayer kind of game, and that means we'll see Splatoon 4 in the middle of the gen instead of at the beginning. Now, as I said earlier, EPD Group 6 is focused on external development. Their producer, Kensuke Tanabe, who's obviously currently in charge of Metro Man 4 creatively, while Retro handles the day-to-day. -day. So we don't need to make a prediction for them. EPD Group 7 has had a pretty varied list of credits. They're mostly known for 2D Metroid, though Mercury Steam did the day-to-day -day on Dread. They're also notable for Rhythm Heaven and Tomodachi Life. Yoshio Sakamoto, the producer on the team, did fulfill his dream recently of making a new Detective Famicom game with Emio the Smiling Man as well. Obviously, they're impossible to predict because they're all over the map. I'll say I do believe they'll help Mercury Steam with another 2D Metroid, but as lead developer, I'll predict Rhythm Heaven as their next main game. I feel like we're really due for a new one. And funnily enough, I have a video about franchises that were absent on Switch that I want on Switch 2, and both Rhythm Heaven and Tomodachi Life got prominent placement. I'll put a card up for that video as well as link it down below. And on that note, if you'll indulge me, it's also a good time to point out, if you like videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. I'm a small channel doing this as a hobby, and it really helps me know what kind of videos to make. Thanks a lot. Now, on to EPD Group 8. They are a banger. This is quite simply the 3D Mario team. I don't think we need to spend time on this. Their next project is obviously the next 3D Mario, and I expect it to be either a launch title or out during the Switch 2's first holiday, as I believe we either get the next Mario Kart or the next 3D Mario day one. If I had to guess, I'd lean 3D Mario for launch because outside of the GameCube, major new consoles have either been a Zelda action adventure game or a Mario platformer. EPD Group 9 is another freebie, as this is the Mario Kart team. They've done other stuff such as ARMS, but just as I said about Group 8, I believe Mario Kart is day one or first holiday the latest. So we know what they're working on. EPD Group 10's most recent original games are Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Pikmin 4, and Super Mario Maker 2. Funny enough, while they focus on 2D Mario and Pikmin almost exclusively, it's still hard to guess what we'll get first. Both Wonder and Pikmin 4 are pretty recent, so there's no telling what will come first. I'm also not convinced we're guaranteed a Super Mario Maker 3, though it is certainly possible. I expect a new 2D Mario and a new Pikmin next gen since their recent entries were both pretty beloved. If I had to bet on one to be first, however, I'll go with 2D Mario, as we always have to wait a little longer than we want for Pikmin. And that wraps up all of EPD. As you can see, we're due for a lot of new games in major franchises from all these EPD groups. But as you know, Nintendo is more first party studios than that. Let's get into their subsidiaries, which are under different roofs than EPD.
Monolith Soft is one of Nintendo's most technically proficient studios. And while they help Nintendo with some other projects, obviously their main games are from the Xenoblade franchise. If I had to guess, I believe we're getting a new game from Monolith Soft pretty early in the new generation. Monolith Soft is pretty efficient, so I think their first next-gen game is likely set for no later than 2026, with a late 2025 release actually not impossible. Remember, Xenoblade Chronicles X released in 2015 on Wii U, then Xenoblade Chronicles 2 came out in December 2017, the first year of Switch, Xenoblade Chronicles Remastered released in 2020, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 came out in 2022. So yes, Monolith Soft is quite prolific. I would expect their next game to obviously be a new Xenoblade Chronicles. Series lead Tetsuya Takahashi said in an interview with tech producer Harada that Monolith Soft has sent Nintendo 10 plus business proposals for approval over the years, but the only ones that have been approved are for Xenoblade. It does feel like the main Xenoblade Chronicles story may be wrapped up after 3 however, so the next Xenoblade might be either a bit different or set up an entirely new saga of sorts. Retro Studios is our next one, and they're pretty simple. They're currently doing Metro Prime 4. So that's their next game, obviously, and it will surely have next-gen enhancements if it doesn't release before Switch 2. But if you want me to guess what their first full exclusive Switch 2 would, title would be, well, obviously it would be many, many years away. But actually, I'm just going to straight up say Metro Prime 5. If 4 does well, I could see Nintendo wanting to strike while the iron's hot, and Retro might not get stuck with so many years between games if they actually have something they can build off of. Nintendo Cube is next, and they're a studio that is used to be known as ND Cube before they recently changed their name. They're simply known for party games as they work on Mario Party, but also have developed 1-2 Switch and Clubhouse Games 51. Obviously I knew Mario Party being their first original Switch 2 game would make sense, but with Mario Party Jamboree releasing this year, I'm going to say a new Clubhouse Games actually ends up being their first game for Switch 2, as it actually did really well, selling over 4.5 million units. So I think Nintendo will want another one, since it's likely a low-budget release that could release in a timely manner. I would then expect the first exclusive Switch 2 Mario Party to come a couple of years after the Switch 2 launch. Next Level Games is a talented studio from Canada that is most known for Luigi's Mansion, but they also did the recent Mario Strikers and Punch-Out for the Wii. If I had to guess, I fully expect we're going to get Luigi's Mansion 4 as the first Switch 2 exclusive game from Next Level. Luigi's Mansion 3 sold over 14 million units, and many people, myself included, consider it one of the best looking games on Switch, if not the best. And I'm sure next level games would make next gen Switch hardware sing and be a great showpiece. NST, or simply Nintendo Software Technology, makes smaller games, but they did lead development on F-099 and have worked on the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series, as well as assist on other Mario related projects. If they make an original game on Switch, I'm guessing it will be another NSO title like F-099, some unique online game. Obviously it's impossible to predict what exactly that could be, however. Now that does it for Nintendo's fully owned studios. I left off a few small teams that don't make original games because this video will be long enough, but I still need to mention a few more studios because people will ask about them if I don't. These next handful of studios Nintendo doesn't actually fully own, if you didn't know. But they are partners that work on exclusive Nintendo IP, making their contribution to Nintendo's console lineup just as important as if they were. So let's get into these Nintendo affiliates. Game Freak. Obviously they're the main developer of Pokemon, and they're currently developing Pokemon Z through A, which I expect will launch in the fall of 2025 and have enhancements on Switch 2. Of course, it's already announced for Switch 1, so if you want my guess on their first Switch 2 only game, I'll say Pokemon's 10th gen will release in 2026 during Pokemon's 30th anniversary, and it will be Switch 2 exclusive. Hell Laboratory is surprisingly not a Nintendo-owned first party, but they have been contracted by Nintendo and made exclusive games for them for decades. They are most famous for developing Kirby, and it's safe to say they're going to make another entry in the franchise. The question is, what kind of Kirby game next? If they make a 2D or more experimental title, I could see a cross-gen release. But if they make another attempt at 3D, and with their strong, strong reception of Kirby and the Forgotten Land, I think it's safe to say that they will. I believe that will be their first Switch 2 exclusive. Intelligent Systems has been working with Nintendo for decades as well, despite not being owned by them. 
They're known for Fire Emblem, as well as Paper Mario, and even something very different like WarioWare. There have been rumors about Fire Emblem 4, Genealogy of the Holy War, getting a remake, and I do think that's going to happen. But I'll make a prediction that since it's been rumored for so long, it likely has been in development with the Switch 1 in mind. It may have some Switch 2 enhancements, sure, but I don't believe they've been holding it back as a Switch 2 game. I think it's likely Genealogy of the Holy War comes out cross-gen in 2025, and then we will get a proper Mario, Paper Mario, excuse me, RPG after that as their first fully exclusive Switch 2 game. Nintendo has been pushing Mario RPGs hard lately, so I have to believe we're due for a new Paper Mario that fully embraces being an RPG. And after all that, I'm done looking at what Nintendo Studios might be cooking for Switch 2. It's important to note that there are other studios that could be mentioned as Nintendo partners or developers, but the list would never end if we go over everyone Nintendo has contracted before. Also, Nintendo does own some other teams, for instance, there is a mobile group with an EPD, but we're just looking at teams that might be making bigger console games. If you have any ideas about what Nintendo might have in development, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you enjoy videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps out a small channel like mine a ton. And I'm planning more stuff like this if people are interested. With that, thanks a bunch, and we'll see you next time.